Assalamu alaikum to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. This is Black Heart Sign of Black and again asking you to hit that share button first and uh, to decide uh, if the like or the subscribe button will help you out uh, later on. But definitely hit the share button now because you know somebody that can benefit from this if it's not you yourself. So that being said, sorry, I'm trying, I tripped the faucet accidentally. All right, so this one is a reply to uh, Jay Shine. Jay Shine, I'm on it because I didn't even expect that my reply was uh, was going to be heard. And then uh, I found out that you had heard it and replied. And you did it very diplomatically uh, with no hatred, even if you disagree. This is a lesson in how sisters can deal with brothers when they don't agree with us. Now, I still say brothers right, sisters are wrong, but people don't always know that they're wrong. We don't know when we're wrong all the time. We're still human. And I think that this is a great way for sisters to understand, okay, look, at least listen to what these brothers are saying before you jump in and, and start ripping them up and going down their throats. Because at the end of the day, all it really comes down to is sisters don't want to hear anything that holds them accountable. A lot of times. And the ones who, the ones who really are not accountable, well, they exist. They're decent. They're out there. But they're taken. They're not available. Sometimes they're defending the other ones because they really don't know that anybody's that bad or they're defending them because they're friends. Whatever the case is, I would say this. Uh, maybe I'm not CISPIM. You may be right about that. I don't uh, I, I leave it to other men to decide if I'm CISPIM or not. If they call me CISPIM, I'm CISPIM. If they say I'm not, I'm not. I leave it to them, but I am it more. I myself am not in Africa teaching. I'm actually in the Arabian Gulf. I was using Ghana as an example of not giving black American citizenship, even though they have done it. They actually did do this. Um, well, I heard that they did. Then I heard they didn't. So I've heard two different things. So the, the thing I'm getting at is that, unfortunately for, uh, for us, um, yeah, un unfortunately for us, we... Uh, African Americans are uh, not really sure about where we can go. And I'll clarify a few points. I actually agreed with you from the beginning that we can't all go to the same place. I was saying that in my recording. We can't all go to one place. Not 19 million of us, not 40 million of us. That is true. Now, the continent could hold us all, but I don't think we can all go to the continent. You're right that we cannot all go to Ghana in the continent. We cannot all go to... Um, you know, we, we cannot all go to Angola. We cannot all go to South Africa. That's true. We couldn't all go to one place. Could the continent take us? Yes. Could one country? No, not even just the men. However, um, I would also say, too, that um, the United States has 18 million Mexican citizens living in its boundaries. And uh, it has 19 million of us black males. So, you know, we, we, we would probably have to be like the Lebanese. The Lebanese, they left their country in large numbers and had this diaspora. And they still have this diaspora to this day. The Lebanese are in Mexico. They're in the United States. They're in Canada. They're in many African nations. They're throughout South America. They're in Central America. They've got these little pocket communities uh, in these areas. They're in the Caribbean. Uh, the Lebanese are all around. And they left their own nation, not not a nation to which they were kidnapped and brought to, but they left their own nation because they could not get along with each other. So as if we have to leave, we got to leave. And I think we do. My reason for saying it is not hatred for black people, per se, although I am very angry with us for not listening. My reason for saying what I said, though, is actually because I think them crackers are dangerous. As a black man who doesn't look African-American, I can spy on these other folks and I've done it. And what I found is that you can't trust the Arabs. I'm teaching them what these crackers are like, but I, you can't make them allies of black people yet. You can only teach them what the crackers like so that they don't become an ally to the cracker against black folks in the event of a, a global racial clash. That's what all I'm doing is preventing that. Uh, if they become allies later, fine. If they don't, that's fine, too. They're, they actually are us. They just don't know it, as we know. So I don't expect much from them, but I'm trying to make sure they don't become the white man's uh, further ally at this point. 
So, and I'm also making them understand that if you're, if you're Muslim, you have to be against white supremacy or you're really not a Muslim. Now, that's a very revolutionary thing to say in the Muslim community. And you, uh, you brought something to light that I wanted a lot of my audience to know about, and I'm glad you did. You mentioned how a lot of African-American Muslims don't call Arabs real Muslims. I'm glad you mentioned that because many in the African-American community, because they don't want to live any kind of discipline, they want to say, well, y'all worship the pale Arabs. The, the, the pale Arab is your God. They want to say stuff like that. Why? Because they don't want to uh, give up, you know, alcohol, pork, <laughs> white women, take your pick. And I'm not a follower of Farrakhan. I'm, a, I'm an Orthodox, but even I do say that black men... Uh, although I do recommend black men going abroad and elsewhere, even to find wives, I don't recommend black men getting with these Beckys. You and I agree on that as well. I tell brothers, leave them Beckys alone. If she's a European or she's a European American or she's a European Australian, leave them Beckys be. Because remember, your enemy came out of her pussy. And wh why are they doing what they're doing? Because they want resources. Okay, we all do. Why do they want resources so bad that they'll do anything but work for them? Because their women want resources so bad that they'll do anything but work for them. That's why. They did it to impress their women and to keep their women. That's really what it came down to. That also being said, um, I, had to say, I, would have, I have to say this too. I have been through decades of confusion with black women from 13 all the way up until I left the United States about five years back. Nothing but confusion, lies, mixed messages, uh, being treated worse than other black men got treated uh, without provoking the shit. That's all I've been dealing with with them. I've not, I have literally not dealt with anything better than that. I don't have an experience better than that. I don't know what it's like to be treated <clears throat> by black women the same as other black men are treated. I don't know what it's like to have an attractive African-American woman show up on time for anything that they agree to with you. Never had it happen. Don't know. Do not know what that's like. Um, you know, mildly cute. Yeah. Somewhat cute. Yeah, I've, I've dealt with that before. Attractive. Beautiful. Go no. Mm -mm. And I, so it's like I was treated like I was an ugly guy and I would have taken that L. I would have said, OK, I'm ugly. But sisters were telling me, no, you're not. Finally, in 2001, and I explained this in a previous recording, uh, the title of which is how colorism and black consciousness led me to the Ibmore red pill. I explained how eventually in 2001, three different black women. I'm sorry, two were in 2001. The other one was in 2002 or three, I believe. Three different black women that didn't know each other confirmed to me that I was not being treated differently because I was ugly. I was being treated differently because I didn't look like an African-American. That's all it was. Sisters didn't think I was ugly. They just thought that they can't be seen out in public with me because it would look like an interracial relationship. And, you know, sisters really care about what other women think. It's a competition for them, a social competition. So whatever they like individually, but they can't brag about publicly in the hair salon, they take as a side nigga. That's what goes on. That's what's happening. So I got, um, I forgot about it because literally after I got this full explanation, uh, about a, less than a month after that maybe, I think that's when 9-11 happened. Shortly after that, from researching the religion, I became Muslim, forgot a lot about this. And in 2017, something happened that jarred my memory. My friend tried to hook me up with three Muslimas, try to introduce me to them, see which ones would like me the most, see which, because he wanted me to remarry after I, uh, I had to divorce the, um, after, after I had to divorce my first non Ados wife. We didn't divorce because of her being bad or me being bad. It was because of her government. It wasn't her fault. I was happy with her overall. I wasn't happy with her country, but I was happy with her. So after that, my close friend that introduced me to her in the first place said, look, Blackheart, uh, I know some Muslim women that are single. Let me send your photos to them. One of them said, don't even send him my photo back. One saw my photo and told my friend, don't send him my photo back. He ain't my type. He's not physically attractive. 
The other two said, let's talk. Now, one kind of cute, but she resembled my American ex. I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to treat her well. And plus, you know what? Apparently I could do better. Uh, the other one, African-American, she wasn't attractive. She wasn't ugly, but she was not attractive. And she had somebody else's babies. She was ready to meet me the next day and come out and join me in this country in which I'm living. So again, it was the same thing. It's like I'm ugly, but I'm not ugly. And that jarred my memory. Oh, my God, that's right. You see, the one that said don't send him my picture is also the one that my friend told me was the most attractive to look at visually. And so I said, OK, I see where this is going. Despite women liking the way that I look, the fact is that black women have this thing in their mind where they're simply too good looking for me, even if they like the way I look. If they're not ugly, then they're too good looking for me without me even being ugly. That's a confusing thing to try to sort out. I've, I've already made sure I've had decades to make sure that it's not my game. It's not my clothes. It's not my walk. It's none of these things that some of these pickup artists try to say that you got to work on if you want to pick up chicks. It's none of that. No, it's just simply put, it's them. At first, I didn't know it. But I took decades, made sure it wasn't me, and that left them. A lot of other brothers went through the same thing. And that's why they're looking at themselves now and they're looking at these women now and they're saying, wait a minute, even if I can afford to self-improve, which is a good idea, why self-improve for these bitches that ain't self-improving? And when they say these bitches, they're talking about the Western bitch, including Sapphire, not just Becky and Amber. Oh, no, Sapphire, too. She ain't self-improving for a motherfucking thing. She'll get them degrees, but she ain't going to walk for 15 minutes a day to keep that gut down. She will not effing do it, and she can't even cook. She ain't going to look and say, okay, well, since you're the man and you're responsible for this and I'm going to hold you responsible, I'm also going to listen to your decision. She ain't going to do that either. She's going to sit up and make these mutually exclusive demands from the same man. I get to be a feminist, but I also get to be a hypergamous. Those two right there are mutually exclusive, and that's what we're dealing with, and that's why a lot of brothers are saying... Get this passport. When it comes time to dig some guts out, you get that passport and you go. Other brothers are saying when it's time to marry, you get your passport and you go. Whatever the case is. Do they have hoes in the DR in Brazil? Yeah, they do. They got them. You're right. They're just more polite about it in general. America's a nation of hoes. Canada is too. And so is England. And these hoes ain't even out there sleeping with most dudes. They're trying to all F the same few guys to the point that the African-American community is now seeing a rise in ailments that affect people who are inbred. According to my subscriber, Dwight Hayes, who learned this either from a physician or a nurse, this is happening. Now, you and I know inbreeding and incest in our culture are abominations like they are in most cultures so this ain't a bunch of people out here who know they're related and they out here screwing anyway it's a bunch of kids they got the same daddy and they don't know they got the same daddy because all these women wanted the same few men and now these kids are of age and they're taking an interest in each other and they screwing and in many cases it's the same thing these it's, it's these girls that are screwing the same few guys and eventually <laughs> some of them are related and they get pregnant that's what's happening here. So I can't look at, I'm just not capable of looking at our community and saying, oh, okay, well, we're just broken and we were traumatized by white folks and that's it. I'm capable of looking at our community and saying, okay, we're broken. We're traumatized by these white folks. Brothers are trying to get some things together and a few of them are not. Sisters ain't trying to get shit together and a few of them are. If Brothers are trying to get stuff together and about a third of them ain't trying to do shit. Then why is it that you don't even have a third of sisters that out here saying that we need to stop driving our men away? What are we doing to drive them away? Brothers are sitting up here saying, what am I doing to not be attractive to an attractive black woman? You already got brothers on that. You don't have sisters sitting up saying, looking at themselves and saying, how are we driving these brothers away? Because there are good brothers, but they're staying by themselves or they're getting passports and going. Charles Tyler had an argument once on a beach or a debate with an African-American woman on a beach in Brazil. And I was like, why doesn't she fuck the shuck up? If she's not doing this stuff, why doesn't she say, OK, well, if you're facing this and I'm not doing it, I can tell these other women don't do these things if you if you want African-American men. Better yet, why doesn't she go and tell African-American women go down to Brazil and get you a Brazilian man? 
Why is she not saying that? We know why. Hypergamy. Uh-uh. No, no, you can't have hypergamy and have feminism at the same time. And black women are feminists. So why the F are they still hypergamous? That's the issue here. I don't have to deal with that with my non ados wife now. She's my second non ados wife. And I don't have to deal with hypergamy and feminism. Matter of fact, I don't have to deal with a hell of a lot of either one. So since she spoils me, I simply spoil her. I was recording this already a while ago, a few minutes ago. While I was recording it on my phone, she called, interrupted the recording. I just started it over again. I didn't trip. You know why she called? I wanted to make sure that you saw the coffee that's waiting on you and that you didn't oversleep. Thank you. She's already at her own job. She's checking on me. So, I, I wasn't really dealing with this a whole lot with my Ado's wife after, I'd say after, for, uh, hell, after the first few months. I was, under, I was under nothing but pressure, and I was shut out. It was, it was brutal. It was bad. It was rough. And I ain't the only one that had to go through it. And she was Muslim. She should have known better. That's what shocked me at first. And I ain't the only one to go through this. I want other brothers also to know and understand that. See, I want other brothers to also realize and understand, too, that they're not required to be patient just so that Ados women can be stupid, so that black British women can be stupid or black Canadian women can be stupid. When they're not required to sit there and be patient and twiddle their thumbs so that these sisters can spend their youth effing the same few guys, then later on come with a used up peace leave and bringing these other men's babies for them to raise. If you ain't her type when she's young and tight, you ain't her type, period. That's what I say. If you ain't her type when she ain't got no babies and that peace leave is nice, or rather I should say the body's nice, you're not her type when it sags and she got them babies. You're just a fallback. You're an insurance policy. And that's why I look at these men and I say, you got a passport? Go abroad. And I recommend that brothers go for African descendant women in these countries. That's my recommendation. I do not recommend that these brothers go after these non-black women. Except maybe some Southeast Asians who don't have a problem with us. I don't recommend that these brothers even go for non-black Arab women, Indian, Pakistanis, Afghans. I say even leave them alone. Ditch them. Don't touch the German broad. Don't touch the German American. Don't touch the Polish. Don't touch the Polish Australian. Leave them white women. I'm the one saying they leave them white women alone, but they got black women around the world and near close to it. And they got some Southeast Asian women that don't hate us. Matter of fact, they seem to love us. Here's why I say that. Whether they're hoes, girlfriends, or wives, whatever the case is, I don't hear my brother saying that they're playing games trying to, trying to take all the money out of them. I don't hear these brothers saying that. Now, I know white guys uh, that have been married to Filipinos or Thais or tried to marry Filipinos or Thais. I know some of those, those guys. Guess what I find out? A lot of these white guys are being taken. These women ain't into them. Matter of fact, a Saudi who was teaching English, I met him one time. I met him a few times. I know him, actually. But um, one of the times I met him, bumped into him, he said to me, well, I was in the Philippines a little while ago with my wife. He married a Filipino woman. And he said to me that he saw a lot of Filipino women with African-American men or African men. And they were happy. He said, what is it about Filipino women? And I said, well, what did you see when they were with white men? And he said... Some smiles, some frowns, a lot of, whole lot of no expressions at all. But the looks on the faces of the couples when the man was black was a lot more. And I said to him, bruh, I, maybe it's just a good match. They seem to love us too. I'm not arguing with that. So, that being said, um, this is just about the women. And it's taken me 19 minutes to describe what the women have to do with it. Maybe I'm not cis -bim, like you said. I probably am not. I'll leave it to the men to decide. If they say I'm not, I'm not. It's okay, because you're right that I did come here for a different reason. I happened to find this stuff later on. When I left the U.S., I didn't know about Ibmore. I knew about MGTOW and Red Pill, but I didn't know about Ibmore, and I didn't know about cis -bim. Uh I didn't even know there was a black manosphere at that point. I learned about it my third year here, working here. Now, 
what I would say is this, though. That's what the women have to do with me advocating brothers leaving the U.S. and never effing going back unless it's to visit uh, or maybe to make some quick money and then bounce or to get rid of them goddamn white folks, which is not something we're capable of doing. 